Hello, Bill here, Pale Horse Survival and Tactical. I'm back for another video. I uh, today turn the screen around here. Today we're gonna make a bow drill kit uh, from oak. This is a uh, couple pieces of uh, wood that I harvested a while back from a dead uh, dead branch on a Quercus lobata which is a uh, valley oak. Quercus is the genus that uh, all oak trees belong to. And I'm gonna go and use this piece here. It's a little rougher. Let's see if we can get a hearth board. Whoop, there you guys are, sorry about that. Get a hearth board out of this piece here. And uh, this is gonna be our spindle. We're gonna have to reduce it down considerably. And it was just a dead branch I ran across. <clears throat> it was off the ground about 12 feet. I actually had to pull my uh, four-wheel drive up underneath it, stand on my toolbox in the bed to reach it. And uh, it's the branch I spotted when I was out and about. And uh, I always try to harvest from uh, from dead branches when possible. And uh, some would say that oak is uh, too hard. The wood's too hard uh, for primitive fire by friction purposes. So. Today we're going to see if we can prove them wrong. I've never used oak, and uh, so today's going to be a first. I've been going through uh, quite a few different, quite a few different woods, trying them out. So far, I've gotten coals with everything I've I've tried. So uh, let's go ahead and get started here. Turn the uh, screen around here. Let's go ahead and get the. Uh, Hearth board split out of here first. Let's see what kind of damage we can do here. Be okay. Do a little clean up on it here. I think we'll uh, use this for the top. This will go on the bottom. side here to make our notch where our notch is. We have harvested a lot of wood from various trees over the past year or so. And uh, it's been kind of rolling around in the bed of my truck so it'd be nice to well, there's our hearth board. Be nice to get these uh, some of that wood out of the bed. My truck's been kind of built up for a while. I've got a few people who've asked me about my uh, the knife I'm using here. I just paracord wrapped the uh, handle, some 550. Left a little uh, wrist lanyard lanyard on there, and uh, the knife itself it's full tang. Uh, it's just a uh, cheapy flea market uh, knife. I think I paid eight dollars for it years ago. I don't know, 12, 12 years ago maybe, or so. And uh, I'm assuming it's 440 stainless. It holds an edge pretty well. Um, it's a uh, spear point blade, and I'm not sure of the thickness. I would say probably uh, oh three sixteenths maybe something like that, 
and uh, for an eight dollar knife a cheapy knife I have used the heck out of this knife for years batoning and uh, uh, bushcrafting uh, purposes never had a problem with it I haven't sharpened it in a while after I use it a few times I strop it on my leather belt about 12 times 15 times on each side and uh, it's uh, it, it puts an edge back on it uh, sharp enough to shave the hair off my arm but uh, it says uh, tomahawk on it not that that really means anything but uh, it's a stainless china but uh, you know, I've got I've got other knives, uh, carbon steel blades, and uh, and different things. But I'll tell you, I've used this so much; it's kind of an extension of myself. And uh, this is the one I always reach. I just I just love this thing, and it came with a great sheath. The sheath is a real heavy webbing. I mean, this is really thick stuff. It's not not thin, and I don't think I'd ever be able to wear the sheath out. But for eight bucks, I can't complain. I've used this thing for years and uh, haven't been able to break it. And I've batoned all types of wood with it. Uh, the, the blade's not bent. Uh, good edge retention. So I guess it's not always how much you spend on uh, on a piece of gear. So what I do is, when I have a big piece like this to save time, I just baton it out. I usually baton it into a square when I'm making a spindle. And that just roughs it out. It turns a... Uh, turns what could be a difficult job and a time-consuming job into a uh, quick quick and easy job. Just my personal way of doing it. You may have a uh, you may have a uh, personal preference that works better for you and uh, if that's the case definitely use uh, use what works nothing is uh, nothing's written in stone in uh, bushcrafting everybody has their own, their own little techniques and methods they, they come up with when they've been doing this for a while so I think really what it boils down to is uh, if it works or not and uh, actually achieves what you're trying to achieve. So I'm going to make a little bit skinnier spindle here since it's a little bit harder wood. by chopping them. I just like to chop. I guess I could try out my new wrist lanyard. I'm so used to using the knife without one, I uh, didn't even think about it. These are nice, just in case the knife slips, it doesn't fly out of your hand. Trusty folder today, so I'm gonna have to. This old beater knife of mine's gonna have to uh, carry the weight all on its own. I usually like my folder for finer detailed work. I 
think we can probably use either end on this one for uh, either bearing block or hearth board. I don't see any knots or anything. Metal here. You want to get the uh, with a spindle. You want to get the uh, the width relatively uh, uniform because the string will always migrate to the, uh, the skinnier end of your spindle, and that can mess up your fire making efforts. It's down on the hearth board or up on the bearing block. just roughing it out. I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera and uh, finish the spindle up. I don't want to bore the heck out of you guys watching me chop away on this thing and whittle away for the next uh, 10 minutes. So I'll go ahead and uh, pause this and I shall return. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm back. This is where we are. The spindle finished. This will be the top. Just carved it into a point. Bearing block. And uh, this is the end uh, that will go on the hearth board. And I usually make my spindles about, about as thick as my thumb. I just have a lot more success with the uh, skinnier spindles. The, uh, the uh, smaller the, the radius, the higher the RPMs. The higher the RPMs, the higher the temperature. It heats up a lot quicker. So let me grab my, uh, we'll go ahead and get a, go ahead and get a uh, pilot hole here. Figure out where we're going to go. This looks like as good a spot as any. Pilot hole is very important. It'll keep the uh, spindle from wandering around on the initial burn in. Otherwise, without the hole, the uh, spindle will jump all over on there instead of biting in. dish it out. I just dish out a nice little hole there and uh, that will uh, fit the spindle perfectly. It's a really good fit. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause the camera and reposition it here uh, so you guys can get a view of the burn in. And uh, then we'll get our notch cut and see if we can't get a coal with this. Uh, I'll be right back. Stay tuned. Okay, welcome back. Got it repositioned here. And uh, the ground seems to be pretty level over here. Go ahead and uh, see if we can get a uh, get this burned in. Let's see how it goes. Make sure you guys are in frame. We're running nice and smooth. Smoking, that's always a good sign. Hope 
worm it in just a little bit deeper before I notch it. Wow, that really worked nice. I'm kind of shocked how quickly the oak started smoking. I really thought I'd have to uh, really thought I'd have to work it a lot a lot longer than I did. Go ahead and get a notch cut in here. Yeah, I'm just going through all kinds of different woods. Huge variation of uh, trees and different shrubs to choose from in my area. Very blessed in that aspect. So, just going through all types of different ones and trying them out. So far, I've gotten a coal with everything I've tried. Haven't failed yet. I guess yet is the that's the key word. So far so good. Alright. Looks like I actually got the notch fairly straight this time for a change. All right, here we are. It's not too bad. Actually, this one's pretty clean. Usually I try to clean any fuzz or anything that's in there that might prevent the, the char from clumping together. But, uh, yeah, I think we're doing all right here. I'm going to I always like to fan the bottom open to help uh, the coal to breathe a little bit better. It just opens it up a little bit. Let's give this a shot, see if we can get a cold one. Actually, we need to prepare a uh, tender bundle here first. I just brought some jute for demonstration purposes. Small clump of jute. And we will uh, use leaf here for a welcome mat. And this is just standard jute I'm going to use for demonstration purposes. And I just use the stuff to separate it. The smaller fibers are uh, easier to ignite. When you're using a coal. And I just pull them apart like that. Just a small tender bundle just uh just for demonstration purposes. If I was actually trying to get a fire going I'd have I'd use uh, more. This is all we need. We'll drop the coal in there and uh, breathe life into it. I'm going to spin you guys around here again.
that up there on the uh, tender bundle up here on the stump here and I went ahead and I stabbed the knife into it. It's a little windy out here. The knife will uh, hold it in place and uh, the ground's slightly damp too so I wanted to get it up off the ground so it doesn't uh, it doesn't absorb uh, any moisture. Get you guys in frame here. Alright, I think we're looking pretty good there. Alright, let's see if we can uh, get this oak to work. It smoked really fast. I was actually really amazed at how easy it did. That's always a good sign. Welcome back curling up here on us. Ground's a little, a little bit uneven. I think we can make it work though. Slow it first, always watch the notch. Don't start cranking on it till your notch is full of char. Otherwise you're defeating the purpose. There's nothing there to ignite. So I can see the char falling down in the notch. A little bit of smoke. Always a good sign. As soon as that notch is full, Give it a couple good, a couple good cranks here, and uh, that should have done it. It's gonna do it. That should do it. Well, we had a coal, and it looks like it went out on us. That's okay, let's give it another shot here. Let's see if we can make this work. didn't do it I don't know what will it looks like we we have coal looks like we're okay a good habit to get into when you put your spindle down I'm putting it on my bow back here keep the business end off the ground so they tend to soak up absorb moisture from the ground but yeah we have a coal here in a harder wood, I had, to, I had to crank on it pretty good there. Let that coal build for a few, catch the breath. That was actually pretty easy though. Being a hardwood, I can't complain. It looks like we went down about two thirds of the way into the uh, hearth board here. Probably enough uh, wood there for one more, one more coal. All right, spin you guys around here.
All right. Nice coal here. Let's see if we can get the get into the tender bundle here. This thing wants to go already. Ooh, we have fire. good um, no complaints pretty uh, pretty uh, smooth uh, pretty smooth uh, operating kit uh, no complaints and uh, a lot of oak out there if you're in an area with uh, a lot of oak trees uh, back when I was out there uh, harvesting this I spotted uh, up the trail a ways a uh, an entire oak tree that was laying on its side, full-size oak, uh, Quercus lobata, that had gotten blown over uh, back in the early spring. We had a whole bunch of heavy storms here, a lot of uh, rain and uh, and uh, huge winds, 60 plus mile an hour. So uh, with the ground saturated, uh, the wind hit it and, uh, and over it went. So there's a lot of wood there, but uh, not hard to find uh, find uh, dead wood out there to to, uh, to uh, harvest from anyways guys I uh, hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it for you guys and uh, I've got a lot more videos in the works I've uh, been very busy uh, cranking them out uh, whenever I get a chance uh, and a little bit of time free so like today I'm in my work clothes been out working and I just finished my work day and I had my camera and everything with me uh, ready to go, so I, I uh, crank one out whenever I get a get a little bit of free time to uh, do so. Anyways, guys, uh, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, definitely appreciate your support and viewership, and uh, I will see you guys very soon on the next one. Everybody have a great day or evening, depending on where uh, you happen to be located at. See you soon. Bye bye.